Hey, Shalom, Markham, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to give all my praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the Tardis' truth, and much peace, love, and salutation to the elect that's scattered across the four corners of the earth, pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Tazamah from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, and I'm coming back with another quick lesson, Lord willing to edify the flock of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And um, what I wanted to do is uh, go into a lesson real quick, going into a, a, a response video that the uh, elder apostle Aramlob did entitled Re, Hebrew Israelites Respond to Deuteronomy 23 and 7, very sad. And as you watch the video, um, of course, the apostle goes in on how <clears throat> that word... Uh, Edomite in Deuteronomy 23 and 7 where it says thou shalt not abhor an Edomite really is Syrian when you go into the uh when you go into the text that word uh uh Adamaya or and then a rum uh a rumya all right the Ra and the Da are very similar characters in the in the ancient Hebrew text in the Syrian uh, manuscript so those words can get uh, uh misconstrued or those characters can get misconstrued where syrian could really mean edomite and edomite could really mean syrian all right i will leave a, a strong's h726 is a clerical error for uh strong's h130 all right but i mean like i said the apostle he went into this lesson and, and clearly broke it down uh successfully so, you know, uh, watch this video if you haven't. You know, like I said, the apostle goes in and breaks it down. Uh, what I want to do is uh, go into a slight history lesson based upon why you're not to abhor or detest a uh, Syrian. All right. Because we dwelt in that land. All right. We dwelt in that land as our forefather Abraham was moving from Ur of the Chaldees to the land of Canaan. OK, we dwelt in that in that area. So we had family and relatives in the, within that area. All right. And there's videos and lessons out there that you can find, you know, if you search going into this history. I know Apostle Elder Ramlob did a lesson uh, in the past going into that history. And he briefly touched on it in this lesson as well, too. You know, but I just want to go into it and go down as to why. It says why 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 we should not abhor a Syrian for he is our brother, okay? And I'm gonna try to make this lesson as uh, as precise as possible. I don't want to you know delve too deep into other things. I just kind of just want to hit the points because I am limited on time. Uh, but the first scripture that I want to grab is in the book of Genesis chapter 11, and we'll start at verse uh, we'll start at verse 26, right? So this is the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verse 26. All right. It says, and Torah, and Torah. Oh, my goodness, man. I'm sorry, man. This person. Don't know what the fuck. Oh, my goodness. This is Genesis, chapter 11, verse 26. It's, it says, and Torah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. All right. So we know Abram is who? Abram is Abraham. All right. Before his name was changed to Abraham. All right. His name was Abram, which means uh, uh, exalted. All right. Father exalted. OK. Nahor. All right. And Haran. These were Abraham's brothers from Terah, their father. OK. It says now these are the generations of Terah. Terah, Terah begat Abram. Nahor and Haran and Haran begat Lot. OK, and Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. OK, so uh, 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 Haran passed away before Terah did. OK, verse 29. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. The name of Nahor's wife Milka, the daughter of Haran. 
Okay, so now Milka is the daughter of Haran, which was the wife of Nahor. The father, the father of Milka, which the father of Milka was Haran, and the father of Iska. Okay. But Sarai, but Sarai was barren and she had no children. And Terah took Abram his son and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son. Okay, so Her Lot was Terah's, or uh, Lot was Terah's grandchild. Okay, so let's read that again. And Terah took Abram his son and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son's a his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with uh, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Okay, so Haran they went to the land of Haran, which is named after who? The land of Haran was named after Haran himself, which was the brother of Abraham, and the brother of Nahor, the son of Terah. Okay, let's just get this word Haran. This word is Haran, mountaineer. All right, it says the city to which Abraham migrated, or the city to which Abraham migrated when he left Ur of the Chaldees and where he stayed until his father died. All right, so they stayed in the land of Haran until his father died before leaving for the promised land. Located in Mesopotamia, in Padan, Aram at the foot of Mount out at the foot of Mount Messiah's between Kabor and the Euphrates. So keep in mind that it's located in Mesopotamia in Padan Aram. Okay, this is where Har the land of Haran is located. Keep in mind Haran is the brother of Abraham and Nahor, the son of Terah. And when you go down into this line, this isn't this isn't. Uh, a rum, okay. The the this the, the still is from the line of uh, our fact set, okay. Because Nahor was also you had a, you had Nahor the father of Terah, then you had Nahor the son of Terah, okay. So now from Genesis eleven, we're going to jump from Genesis eleven, we're going to jump to the uh, chapter twenty two, and we're going to jump down to verse twenty, and like I said, I'm just hitting the points for the sake of time. Genesis twenty two and twenty. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milka. Well, now, who was Milka again? Milka is the wife of Nahor, the daughter of Haran. All right. She hath also born children unto thy brother Nahor. Right. Huz, his firstborn, and Buz, his brother, and come and in Kemuel, the father of Aram. Now, this isn't the Aram, the father of the Syrians. This is this is just another Aram. All right. It says in in Chasa in in uh in Chesed, and Hazol, and Pildash, and Jidlaf, and Bethuel. All right. Now, who was Bethuel? Right. And Beth. Now, Bethuel is the son of Milka. All right, the son of Milcah and the son of Nahor, right? And Bethuel begat Rebekah. Now we know who Rebekah is. Rebekah is the is the wife of Isaac. All right, and Bethuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. Okay, so these were the children of Nahor and Milcah. And the key child here we have is Bethuel. Okay, so Bethuel was Abraham's nephew. Okay, Abraham was Bethuel's uncle. Okay, just keep all this in mind. Now we're going to jump from here. We're going to jump to chapter 24 and we're going to start at the top and we're going to jump around in this chapter. This is Genesis 24 and 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Salaki, that ruled over all that he had, where we at? Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord Yahweh, the power of heaven and the power of earth, that thou should not take a wife unto my son, 
of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Right. But thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred. Right. My he's son. Now, this is Abraham saying, look, you're going to go into my country and go into my kindred. What is kindred? Your family. And take a wife unto my son, Isaac. The key thing is that what he told him to go into his country and unto his kindred. His family. OK, now let's jump down to verse 15 for the sake of time. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebecca came out who was born to Bethuel. Now, who was Bethuel again? Bethuel was the son of Milcah and Nahor, which Nahor was the brother of Abraham and the brother of Haran. Right. Rebecca, which came out, who was who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. Now, we, you know, so now we're going to jump from verse 15. We're going to jump down to verse 28 because, you know, it goes into the story of how he uh, pretty much he uh, he was inquiring of who she was and, that, and the reason why he was there. Right now, when you jump down to verse 28. And the damsel ran and told them of her and the damsel ran talking about Rebecca and told them of her mother's house. These things now of her mother's house was told these things. Right now, verse 29. And Rebecca had a brother and his name was Laban. Now, who was Laban? Laban, <laughs> Laban was the son of Bethuel. OK, Laban was the son of Bethuel. Okay, so Bethuel had Rebekah and he had Laban, right? And Laban ran out unto the unto the man, and uh, uh, and Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. Okay, so, so they pretty much came out, and uh, Laban met Abraham's servant, and Laban and Bethuel discussed the, the reason why they was there, and then they pretty much gave Rebekah unto the servant to a wife for Isaac, right? And uh, like I said, I'm just I'm just summarizing for the sake of time. Now we're going to jump to chapter 25 and we're going to read. We're going to jump down to verse uh, 20. OK, we'll start at verse 19. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac was 40 years old when he took to and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padana Rum. OK, so they call Bethuel the what they call Bethuel, the Syrian. Of Padan Aram. Why? Because he dealt in the, they lived and dwelt within the land of Haran or Haran, which Haran was who Haran was Abraham's brother. So it says, read it again. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took to Rebecca to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram. OK. The sister to Laban, the Syrian. So why are they calling Laban and Bethuel Syrians? Because they dwelt in that land. Just because you dwell in the land of Syria doesn't make you a Syrian. For example, you have African-Americans. Are you calling yourselves Americans? Does that necessarily mean that you're a descendant of Amerigo Vespucci? No, you just dwell in that land. Another example is who Simon the Canaanite. Now, was Simon the Canaanite was he act was he act was he actually a Canaanite? No, he was dwelt in the land of Canaan. You see. So let's read that one more time. And Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. Okay. So they were called Syrians because they dwelt in that land. OK, now let's jump to chapter 28. We'll start at the verse, verse one. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Now, this is the same exact thing that Abraham told his servant for Isaac. And Isaac's telling the same thing to Jacob. Right. Arise, go to Padana Rum. Right. Go to Padanaram to the house of Bethuel, 
thy mother's father. Now, this is Isaac speaking to Jacob. Read it. Let's read it again. Arise, go to Badonaram, to the house of Bethuel. Now, who was Bethuel again? Bethuel was the son of uh, of the son of Nahor. OK. And he wifed Milcah. All right. I'm sorry. No, 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 not, not wife. Nahor wife Milcah. Excuse me. And through through Nahor Milcah, Bethuel came into the uh, Bethuel came into the scene. So to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father. Now, who was the mother? Who was the mother of Jacob? Rebecca. OK. Which Rebecca was the was the daughter of Bethuel. And take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Okay, so he was told to take a wife of Laban. Or take take a wife, take a wife of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And the most high power almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and thou that thou mayest be a multitude of people, and give thee a blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger. Which the Most High gave unto Abraham, going into the land of Canaan. Verse five. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanaram, unto Laban, right, son of Bethuel the Syrian. Okay, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. But he went to Bethuel. He went to he went to Laban. The son of Bethuel, the Syrian. Okay. He was called the Syrian. Because they dwelt in that land. Okay. Now let's jump to chapter 29. That's why the scripture says, with all thy getting, get understanding. In order to understand the mystery, you got to know the history. As the saying goes, right? This is just, this is Genesis 29 and verse 1. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of, of the people of the east. And he looked and beheld and behold a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying, lying by it. For out of the wet, for out of that well, they watered the flocks and a great stone was was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in that place. And Jacob said unto them. My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, of Haran are we. Okay, of Har they said, look, we're of, we're of Haran. Okay, because remember, Haran was a was a was a was a person first. Abraham's brother. It was also named. At, it was also a land of Haran named after Haran himself. It said, of Haran are we? Right now, we just jump to verse five, and he said unto them, Know ye Laban? The son of Nahor. So why did they say that Laban was the son of Nahor? When they said Laban was the son of Bethuel. Okay, because Bethuel was the son of Nahor. Okay. So it says, and he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. All right. So now let's jump down to verse 13. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son. Jacob, his sister's son, who was the sister of Laban? Rebecca. OK, Rebecca was the sister of Laban. That he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban, here's the point. And Laban said to him, surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Now, why did Laban tell Jacob that he was his bone and his flesh? Because they were kindred. They were family. They were cousins. They were related to each other. OK. He says, surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Why did Laban say that to Jacob? Because they were family, man. OK. They were family. They were related. Laban and Ra Laban and Rebecca were brother and sister, which were children of Bethuel, which Bethuel 
was the son of Nahor and Milcah, which Nahor was the brother of Abraham. They were related. You see? When somebody says you're of my bone and of my flesh, that means that they were kindred. They were related to one another, man. It's that simple. That's why whenever you read and what? Whenever you read in Deuteronomy 26 and 5, what? And thou shalt speak and say before Yahweh thy power, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. Because we dwelt in the land of Syria, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A Syrian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. You see, that's why whenever you read in Deuteronomy 23 and 7, it says what? Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite or a Syrian, for he is thy brother. He is thy brother. Because when you go down the line, once again. Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran died before they went, before they left Ur of the Chaldees. Haran was named, the land of Haran was named after Haran himself. Nahor begat, or Nahor wifed Milcah, which begat Bethuel, which Bethuel begat Rebekah and Laban. Rebekah and Isaac had a child, Jacob and Esau. And Laban had who? Laban had a Rachel and Leah. They were family. That's why they were called the Syrians. That's why Laban said, Thou art of my bone and of my flesh. Thou shalt not abhor a Syrian, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land. Because we, we, we reproduced in the land of Egypt as well. Okay? And this is the last one, Hosea 12 and 12. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria. Okay. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria. And Israel, Jacob, served for a while. Who did he serve? He served Laban for a while. And for a wife, he kept sheep. Who did he, he serve Jacob? I'm sorry. He served late Laban. I want to say for, uh, what was it, for seven years? To receive uh, 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 Rachel. Matter of fact. Just to prove that, what's the Genesis 28? I believe it's uh, 20. Let's see. Is it Genesis 28 or 29? Right. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they, se and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. You see? So he served. He served. Laban for seven years to receive Rachel. Okay. So that's why whenever you read in Deuteronomy 23 and seven, it says thou shalt not abhor it in a uh, Syrian for he is thy brother. So I just want to go into that and go into the quick history, man. You know, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. I just want to, you know, go down the line and go through that. You know, Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praises on the glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rechakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth and much peace, love, and salutation to the elect. Shalom.